Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I hope you all are doing well. We are Petroleum from Scratch. We were talking about a few topics in the reservoir engineering lessons. Uh, we are back with another one. Uh, it will be a bit of an advanced topic from the last ones, but it is a very important topic as uh, we move on towards reservoir engineering. It is very important to connect our understanding with what there already exists, right? In the fields of, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, what people look at in chemical engineering topics, fluid mechanics and stuff like that. So in the world of physics, how can you relate to reservoir engineering? So that's what the aim of today's topic is. So like you can see, the topic of today is thinking of reservoir like a bundle of capillaries. Uh, in the first part of this video, video se sessions, we will specify what a particular a reservoir it is, I mean, not in terms of a petroleum engineering language, but basically in terms of generic language, uh, like normal people can understand, right? So if you imagine, let's imagine a sponge, right? A sponge. And also like always, I'm accompanied by my uh, fellow culprit, uh, Mr. Jayesh Char. Uh, hi, Jayesh, how are you doing? Hello. Yeah. So, so uh, topic we, we are going to relate your reservoir with the pipe flow. The one thing that you will study in production in engineering, fluid flow through pipes, we will relate that thing with the, the fluid flow through reservoir. Yeah. So we expect that, uh, uh, I mean, even if you are appearing for any competitive exam, fluid mechanics is one of the very important topics or people must uh, have a very clear understanding. They also teach you in school that topic. They also teach you this uh, in uh, before the petroleum engineering topics they start in first or second year. But if they don't, and if you don't remember, don't worry about it. There are a lot of books uh, that you can refer to understand fluid mechanics. But the aim of today's topic is, and we will try to keep it as generic as possible. The aim of today's uh, first, uh, like there will be a multiple videos on this topic because this is a derivation, which is kind of, very involving, but we will explain it slowly, uh, very, very, uh, uh, you know, layman terms. So be with us. Uh, so what I was saying was, let's imagine that your reservoir is like a sponge, right? And if you imagine your sponge, uh, sponge, the one that you find, you know, in your cushions and all, if you open them, or if you imagine something that sponge, everyone knows, right? So if you dip the sponge inside water, it gets so it soaks water and then you press uh, it, it, it drips out water, right? It drips out water. So basically what you are trying to, uh, you know, what you need to see here is you need to imagine the sponge to be like a reservoir, right? But how is water getting inside the sponge? It is because there are a lot of channels inside the sponge. Exactly the same way there are a lot of channels inside the reservoir. And by channels, I mean something like this. A lot of pipelines, which are, uh, of course, this is a very ideal diagram. This is a very ideal diagram. But a lot of pipelines like this, one pipeline is like this, one pipeline is like this, one pipeline is like this. So when you dip this inside water, water will try to get, get inside like this. And when you press it, water gets outside like this. So basically, what a sponge is, is again a bundle of capillaries. Similarly, all these capillaries together, there are infinitely many capillaries on micro scales. Combine them together and that makes it a, a rock, a reservoir rock. So basically just imagine if this much of a, of a rock sample has so many capillaries, imagine how many capillaries can be there in the entire subsurface or the entire reservoir. So we can say that uh, a reservoir can be approximated, can be approximated like a summation, and I always like to write in shorthand notation. So I, it can be assumed like a summation of a lot of capillaries. And what a capillary is, let's write the definition of a capillary. What a capillary is, a capillary is nothing but a very, very, very uh, small diameter Micro scale, right? Micro scale pipeline. 
right? And this is where if we will go on in the topics, we will realize that uh, capillary pressures and all, they exist because of this diameter constraint. Your diameters, if they get very small, then capillary pressure exists. Fluids start rising and, you know, on its own due to capillary interactions and capillary forces, which is not the case in pipelines, right? So that's the difference between reservoir fluid flow through porous media versus fluid flow through uh, pipelines. Pipelines don't generally show a lot of, you know, because the diameter is so huge, uh, you will never see a huge uh, diameter tubular uh, pulling up water to huge heights. That means there is a lack of capillary activity in there. So this is just a background of where we are coming from. And this is what you need to understand. A reservoir is basically a bunch of capillaries. So our approach will be, we'll pick one capillary. We'll pick one capillary and derive the pipeline flow for that capillary. And that flow, we will derive and calculate the formula for that flow, basically the relation between the velocity and the delta P. And then we will try to approximate that correlation. Now, remember that correlation is purely for pipeline flow, but we will try to find how similar that is with our very own Darcy's law. And if we do find similarities, then there is a debate, which is very much possible. That is Darcy's law and origination from this kind of flow, or was it a discovery in itself? That's not uh, in our hands to decide. I mean, the people have uh, different decisions on that. That's, uh, we are not claiming any belief in here, but there is always this discussion. People, some people say that this is a origination from here. Some people also come up with uh, Darcy's experiments and all, but our focus is we will try to combine everything. We will try to assume everything has its own basis. So, uh, I think this is good enough for uh, motivating and the starting video on what we are going to discuss. And yes, uh, the derivation, the, the equation that we'll be deriving in, in this will be called, let me write this, it will be called Hagen, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Poizul's equation, right? So this is the equation that we will be deriving in the coming sessions. Uh, Jesh, uh, uh, please do support me when I make mistakes in the coming sessions. But this is yeah. our aim. As it as is one of the have. greatest uh, derivation, and even for the uh, people who are preparing for the gate exam in gate twenty twenty, a lot of questions came from this derivation only so for them Absolutely. also. But apart from gate, also the one who wants to study um, the petroleum engineering concepts, also for them it is one of the major derivation true that true true definitely so great ending comments let's let's continue this jesh uh, in the next session then and uh, we will be deriving this step by step uh, so i hope it's an interesting series of sessions see you in the next les lesson guys thanks a lot